Show Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. I need a moment here, Mike, but before I have my moment, did mm. you get to watch this pay per view at last? I did indeed, yes. Okay. Listen, everybody. Yes. Had to go through traditional means, though, because as of 1 p.m. Eastern time, it was still not up in English on the Bleacher Report app. That is something they need to figure out quickly. Yes. Now let's talk about this this thing here. I, I got a few things I have to say. So when I was watching the match, okay, I do not, I'm not a fan of exploding barbed wire death matches with gore and blood, okay? But I was enjoying the match. They, they, it was a, it was a, I can't even imagine, I guess I can't imagine because I've seen a few of these before, but they worked a psychological exploding barbed wire death match. It was not like the bell rang and they just started throwing themselves into bombs and they were blowing everything like that. They worked it like a wrestling match that also involved barbed wire and bombs. The first time that that uh, John Moxley got sent into the barbed wire and it blew up, I was like, that was pretty cool. There was an explosion and there was smoke and the fans were like, yeah, he got blown up, dude. It was cool. Now then, they did a spot off the apron, a death rider off the apron onto a barbed wire board on the floor and that explosion was not very good and so the eyes are like ah and i'm sitting there thinking dude that bro took a death rider off the apron onto a barbed wire board on his head and you guys went ah because it wasn't a big enough bomb well, that sucks so they keep going and and granted the the good brothers were in there for way too long without someone coming to save moxley but they do the deal. There were a couple clever spots, and finally they pin John Moxley. And when it was over, I was like, "Man, you know the bar is low, but that was the best exploding barbed wire death match I ever saw." So congratulations to you guys. Then they announce, "Well, the the place is still gonna blow up in three minutes. No one can no one can take these bombs apart." I was like, "What?" So anyway, I'm waiting around. I'm getting all excited for this big explosion. The, this giant clock appears on the screen. I'm like, ah, here we go. Bombs are going to go off, brother. And, it cuts, and then Eddie Kingston comes out. It's like, oh, my God, he's trying to save his friend from being blown up. Oh, my God, but he can't save me. He lays on the body of John Moxley. And all of a sudden, four fireworks out of the four posts. And then way out yonder, you see boom, 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 like a mile away from the ring. A couple puffs of smoke. I was like. And I tweeted this. Oops. <laughs> we waited, and that was the payoff. Part of me was, like, laughing that it was so horrible. And the other part of me was like, oh, my God, can you imagine being John Moxley and and uh, Kenny Omega, and you killed yourselves for 30 minutes with bombs and barbed wire and cut yourself and, and poof. That's the end. Omega was furious, by the way. I could tell you all that. He was angry. And then I felt bad for Eddie, because, like, this is big Eddie's big baby face turn. And, of course, he comes out, and it goes poof, 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 and he sells it like he's dead. And the announcers are talking about this giant explosion, and there was no giant explosion. So, I was like, oh, man, what a disaster. But then, here's the thing, everybody. I was on our board... I was on Twitter, I was on the Twitch chat, and I looked through the YouTube comments of the show that Dave and I did, and you know what I saw over and over again that I just couldn't believe? I had people saying that they were depressed. I was so depressed when the show was over. I was so... And if it had been like one person, or I got one email, but there were so many people that were depressed. And I was like, Bro, it was a freaking disaster. But why are you depressed? The company is not going out of business. They're going to have a show on Wednesday. Everything, like, life is going to move on. Why are you depressed, okay? I understand being sad for the guys that they blew each other up and then it was a dud. But you're depressed? Like, it ruined your day and you're still, your day is still ruined the next day? Was it really that bad? There's one other thing I got to say. 
Because it's actually just one guy who's emailed me 50 times and tweeted me 50 times, and he's begging me on the tweet chat to read his thing. So I'm going to read it because I want to make this abundantly clear. I am not going to defend this final explosion. It was a dud and it was a disaster, but I am going to defend Eddie Kingston. Listen to me, okay? People are like, Eddie Kingston's supposed to be a veteran. How could he make such a rookie mistake and sell this explosion that didn't go off? La 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 la. Listen. Eddie Kingston was told, clearly, I haven't talked to Eddie Kingston, but this is clearly what he was told. You're going to go to the ring. You're going to try to get John Moxley out of there. You can't. And so you're going to cover him with your body. The ring is going to explode. This is your valiant babyface turn. You have saved this man's life. Okay? That's what he's told. So what does Eddie Kingston do? Well, Eddie Kingston comes down to the ring. Eddie Kingston tries to get his buddy out of there. He can't. And so if you actually watch the show, what does Eddie Kingston do? He covers his friend. He covers his own head. And he hears, boom, 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 boom. And then he rolls over and he plays dead like he's supposed to. How was Eddie Kingston supposed to know it was a dud? He covered his head. He couldn't see anything. So he laid there dead exactly like he was supposed to. Now, once somebody came out and they were like, brother, it didn't blow up. It sucked. I mean, you have two options. You either just jump up and go, hey, thank God this thing didn't blow up after you've played dead. Or you just go along with what you, what was Eddie supposed to do? What was he supposed to do? John Moxley had his eyes closed. It wasn't until the show went off the air that John Moxley cuts the promo and he went into business for himself and he basically said, well, this Kenny Omega's a great wrestler, but he can't build a bomb worth a damn. And that appears to be the story they're going with. All I can tell you, if you're depressed, is I saw Eddie Kingston cut a promo on a cookie, okay? This guy's going to go out on Wednesday, and if anybody can cut a promo and explain why they sold an explosion that wasn't there, I trusted Eddie Kingston. Maybe it's going to suck. Maybe it's going to be horrible. But it happened. We all saw it with our own eyes. They're going to do the best they can, and they're going to move on. Must we be depressed? No. Why would you be depressed? I don't you- know. You talk a whole bunch of nonsense in forums and discords and on social media, and you have other fans dunking on you because you run your mouth so much that they throw this wet fart of an explosion, a bomb that went into business for itself. You know, they throw that back in your face. To me, that would be the only way you're going to be depressed. I mean, what was there to be depressed about about that match? Yeah, the explosion was bad. Everybody's got to eat it for that there were jokes after jokes after jokes, many of them hilarious. You know, the Titanic theme is Eddie was down there covering Moxley. That was hilarious. I just, there were plenty of them. It is what it is. And unfortunately, that's what people are going to remember. They are always going to remember that moment in that match. But they had whatever it was, 25 minutes before that, where these two guys just absolutely killed each other. And there were a couple of explosions, as you mentioned, that went off really, really well. I have a lot of problems with how this match was structured, why they decided to do it inside Daly's place as opposed to TII Bank Center. To me, they built up something they couldn't deliver, and they shouldn't have done that. We're we're Americans, damn it. We've seen Hollywood action flicks. We like things blowing up. We know what explosions are. And if you were going to go all out, I mean, even if they would have had the explosions, I think that they mentally, that you, you see they had planned, was that really what you were expecting? You were expecting this thing to be over the top. We we sometimes feel like there feels like there's more pyro for Cody's entrances than there was for that last big blow up. So they made mistakes there. But unfortunately, what will get forgotten about or, or what should not get forgotten about is how well they worked that match. Because as a deathmatch expert will tell you, and I'm not one of them. You still need psychology to make a deathmatch work. Otherwise, it's all garbage, and they did that. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.